All right, ladies and gentlemen, our first conversation today will be with um, one who is not making a first-time appearance on Caravan to Midnight. It's Ms. Jade Helm, 15 herself, DJ. How are you, DJ? Good, John. How are you? Doing Thank okay, you doing okay. Me. Say, uh, it's been a while since we have spoken, and I'm just wondering, where you been? What you been doing? What's going on? Well, aside from running around, you know, putting out a bunch of fires and stuff, I've been... Um, you know, trying to keep up with, you know, the tech field, especially in the area of AI and the migration into pattern recognition, as well as a lot of the patents that are now coming to the forefront on this stuff. And the information is just every day, there's so much more. It, it's starting to become difficult <laughs> to um, keep up with. Yeah. So whatever happened to, you know, Jade Helm 15 was all the rage for a while, and then it just dropped off the scope like it never happened. All these people were flipping out, and they were trying to talk to military officers down there and around Bastrop, Texas, somewhere down there. And um, then all of a sudden, it was just gone. Yeah, well, I, I don't think it's gone, and I don't think the, um, the actual exercise itself was um, what it was being promoted as either. You know, I, I still... To this day, I firmly believe they were running out. They were rolling out an AI warfare system to see how an autonomous system could, um, how well it would be able to collect all of the ABI that your activity-based information communicated back, and then you know, um, relay um, operations back to the field. Yeah. Now, what's going on with Level 9 News? That's Level 9 with the actual number 9 between Level and News. Site's down temporarily, yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Site is down. um, I guess it went down sometime yesterday. The day before that, I got... um, I got a, I received an email from one of my subs in the Netherlands, and he sent me a screenshot you know, when he tried to access the site, and apparently the site was being banned there, and um, as of midday yesterday, the site was completely down. It's quasi up right now at this point. It doesn't look like it looked like before, but you can still access, you know, the videos, um, the radio interviews. Um, you're going to have a problem accessing all of the journalism reports on that site right now. <clears throat> Okay, but, but you're working on it. Page. It'll be back up and running before too long. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Well, what are some of the? Um, you know, you're into so much stuff. I mean, uh, some of the, some of the topics uh, covered on your site are, you know, everything from the Gulf of Mexico and Fukushima to the aerosol spraying, the weather warfare, the climate disruption, the harp, the, the whole geoengineering thing, you know, human health, new world order, economy and finance, geopolitics. <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, What's getting, the, what's getting the most of your attention these right days? Right now, what's getting the most of my attention um, are, are, is this global neural net, you know, that I call it. It's, it's the AI, um, more specifically the artificial general intelligence being rolled out on a distributed network globally. Yep. And how the, for example, the, the Internet is changing. And from where I sit, it looks like that we're losing the battle for our autonomy. And the AI is going to be making decisions as to what information gets to us and what's filtered out. Well, for example, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you go because otherwise it's going to be nothing but questions. Oh, that's okay, too. Uh, for example, is the news feeds. <clears throat> you know, I, I've particularly notice my news feeds are changing. I'm not getting the type of stuff I was getting before. You know, the the uh, the perspectives on the news feeds, they're, they're different now. And what appears to be happening is that the, those determinations are being made based on the information being voluntarily posted by people, all people on social media, as well as your individual, as as well as the individual ABI or the activity-based information being collected on us through the massive um, surveillance programs 
out there. So they're getting information from two different um, two different inroads. They're getting the voluntary information that everybody's putting out about themselves, which some people are candid, some not so much. And then they're getting the involuntary information that's being collected against your will on your communications devices, your telephone calls, emails, text messages, that type of thing. So in other words, your node on the network, the human network node, appears to be now being surrounded by an information filter or bubble. And these filters are, or bubbles are customized. This is how, this is, this is the level of detail it's going. They're being customized or customizable on an individual basis. Now this filter will determine what gets through based on what the algorithms or the AI think you want to see and also based on what they determine you should be seeing or learning. Now, are we talking about ads or are we talking about actual content? No, we're talking about content now. Yeah. We're talking about content. And I'll give you an example, okay? Two different people, you take two different people. I ran this test myself and I got the results I was expecting. You take two different people with, um, let's say, opposing um, social media platforms, say um, a conservative and a liberal, um, an atheist and a Christian. Um, you get the point, right? Yep. You get the picture? Oh, yeah. All right. You both do on two separate computers. You could even do it on the same computer, but we did it on two separate computers. We did two searches using the same keywords. Figuring, you know, you would think you get the same results, right? The exact same keywords using the exact same browser and the exact same search engine. Okay, you type in the keywords what you're searching for. Boom, you should see the same result on both machines, right? Wrong. Two completely different feeds. It's interesting you should say this. I have observed this repeatedly over just the last two or three months. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Keep rolling, kid. This is good. Okay, now broadcast media, you know, the, the news, the newspapers, magazines, tabloids, news feeds, that type of stuff, has employed the, this concept in the form of um, human information gatekeepers for, you know, as long as information's been being uh, disseminated to the public. And these gatekeepers we've known or, you know, we've, we've labeled them editors who would decide what's published and what's not. Now, these people were guided, many of them, by um, ethical and moral boundaries. Okay, they had, they had their own set of ethics, whether we agreed with them or not, and they had their own morality, whether we agreed with it or not. <clears throat> not only that, if you weren't comfortable with the way a particular publication or um, news outlet was presenting its information, you could subscribe to a different publication or change the channel on the TV. Now, information delivery appears to be changing in this respect by removing choice from what we see, hear, learn, and what we're exposed to. Um, by virtue of, of um, by, by virtue of the fact that these human gatekeepers, these editors and um, publishers and things like that, are now being replaced by algorithmic AI that don't have human ethics, morals, and disregard um, the individual's need for a balanced information diet, so to speak, in order to make um, informed decisions. So instead, what appears to be happening is that these personal filters, the, the bubble that I was talking about, yeah. are steadily feeding us a diet of junk food information based on what it, the AI algorithms, think we want to see. Hmm. Okay? Now... <laughs> 
Yeah, that's I a mean, what, that's annoying. What, just what, just what, the exposition what, of that idea is annoying. Yeah, and it's it's condescending too. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I was getting now, at. You read my mind. It's like, uh, who, who are the geniuses that are making these decisions or, or inputting this into the uh, the big uh, mystical apparatus? Well, yeah, exactly. And not only that, but it also says, um, we don't believe you're capable of making your own decisions as far as what you need to know or what you want to know, what should entertain you and what we think should entertain you. You know, we're going to be making those decisions for you. Now, Google's um, AI Internet Butler, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's, it's kind of being rolled out now. It's called Money Penny. Okay, it was originally uh, created um, and, and directed at advertising, education, entertainment. And it inherently has the ability to sway your individual beliefs and ideologies by what it presents to you. Nice. Now, like I said, this was originally developed um, and sold to um, the corporations, their advertising and marketing departments is, you know, we collect all of this information on everybody using Google, everybody using Facebook. And we're going to tailor that information, you know, based on their um, activity-based uh, the activity-based intelligence on each individual to kind of like herd them or steer them over to your product or service. But it appears that, you know, this is being taken a step further where it is now being used and has the ability to, to as I mentioned, to sway your individual beliefs and ideology. Now, technology is being employed by Google, uh, Facebook, Microsoft, um, to conduct stealth social engineering campaigns on a massive, massive technology platform, which is, you know, the Internet of Things or the IoT. And, you know, I believe that if we don't pay attention to this, it could be a problem in the very near future. Well, let me ask you this. How do you even protest something like this? I mean, other well, than... I mean, it's being forced. It's being forced on you. You know, so as far as protesting it, I think, you know, some of the actions, evasive actions we can take is, you know, don't spend every free minute of your waking life on Facebook or on LinkedIn or, you know, in front of the computer just searching arbitrary things on the internet you know the other thing that's been mentioned by several different people is that for example on the social media platforms just start posting nonsense information stuff that makes no sense and doesn't even pertain to you because hmm. that will screw up your individual profile to some degree now as far as how do we combat this how do we protest it as I said, if you want to keep using these platforms and you want to keep using the Internet, which is, you know, I still believe is a phenomenal tool, but it's, it's being weaponized against us. Um, you know, just be very careful what you put out there. What do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is keep in the back of your mind anything you, can, you put out there, especially on the social media platforms, can and probably will be used against you in the future because all this data is being cataloged, it's being archived, it's being meta-tagged, and it can be called back up again. This is really strange. You know, I was just watching our, um, I consider him to be our friend, Bill Still, and he's still reporting from Washington, D.C., and he had, he put a... Uh, he has a video up there where he's, where he's talking about, uh, and this may seem a little far afield, but you'll see what I'm getting at in a minute. Um, a story to the effect that in the UK, Muslim women, unemployment rate, 75%. Muslim men, 50%. In Poland, Poland, a people you know will... Uh, you know, it doesn't take much to do this. I, I remember there was a, I think... Uh, Conrad was one of the actors, the guy in Black Sheep Squadron years ago. 
uh, <laughs> these guys had these these ridiculous motorcycle outfits on. He had a horn coming out of his forehead. And these bikers said, where are you guys from? And he goes, Poland. And they all rode off, you know. Whenever you talk about the Poles, it's like, what's the deal with the Poles? The Poles are some of the bravest people on the entire European continent. They are out there with the, with their national flags talking about gospel, not the Quran. I mean, a bunch of them, they're going, you know, we're not trying to... The leaders up there who's leading all these chants is, is saying effectively... You know, we're not looking for violence, we're not looking for a fight, but we're not afraid, and we're not going for this at all. And I'm thinking, where is the Polish spirit of refusal to accept things like all this stuff that Schmidt and Kurzweil and all the rest of these lunatics, I think they're lunatics, I mean, there is such a thing as an evil genius, and and, um, they're more interested in evolving their, uh, well, to use the time-worn phrase, their... I would say the point one percent than they are in uh, helping the other ninety nine to evolve at all. I mean, it's all about control with these dudes. So, if the internet, are you? I think you're suggesting that the internet is beginning to think because if it isn't, then where are these people who are? orchestrating its behavior in regard to an individual searches and 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 kind of you know bending that individual's mind toward their way of looking at things i mean who is doing this is it is it a group of people doing it or or is the internet itself is the internet itself becoming semi sentient i i think is the question yeah, I think, you know, they're definitely moving in that direction. And as far as, you know, the reference to people like Kurzweil and Lacoon and a, a lot of these other people, you know, they, they these people, in, in my opinion, and, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, although it's going to come out that way, they're megalomaniacs. They want to become God. You know, they're, they're looking for two things, um, a godlike complex an eternal life, hmm. you know, and I think Kurzweil was the one who actually said something to the effect that I'm paraphrasing, you know, I will sweep away, kill, rid from the face of the earth, anyone who tries to get in my way. So this nice. is how, you know, hell bent he is, you know, on his transhumanism platform. And unfortunately, there are a lot of other megalomaniacs out there that, you know, support this idea. And another thing that I see happening, um, and I kind of touched in this, uh, I just put three reports, actually four reports out recently. Um, One's called Dreamland. Uh, The other one is... um, AI will be making decisions for you in the future. And um, it, oh, and another one, transcendence. You want to talk about something really creepy. Yeah, always. Okay. (laughs) Well, in transcendence, I talk about, I um, I talk about this company called um, Humitech. Humatech, H-U-M-A-I-T-E-C-H, all one word. They're an L.A.-based AI company that's taking this Kurzweil, Kurzweil quest for immortality one step further in that what they are looking to do, and the technology is already out there with the brain mapping, remote neural monitoring, that stuff, the technology is there, but what he's specifically doing with his company is he is looking to at the point of death flash freeze the brain chronically freeze the brain and then download the neural map the biological the information contained in the biological neural map of the brain into a computer where then an artificial neural network is, is created and then uploaded into either a clone or a cybernetic unit so that you can then, in effect, live for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Now, 
again, what I said, what I, what I think a lot of this stuff is leading to is a separation of the human flesh and blood being from the sentient, as you mentioned, um, soul and consciousness that, you know, you need both of those things to make up a human, what we know as a human. I believe this technology is kind of um, going down the road where they're looking to actually separate that. Because <laughs> for one thing, what they still haven't been able to figure out is the essence or mechanics of the soul or of human consciousness. And I think that uh, CERN is playing a very big role in this. So the way that they, the scientists and engineers are kind of explaining it is, here, how did they put it? I'm looking for this here. Um, and this is, again, in the Transcendence Report. Um, you know, I explained that computer technology has enabled scientists and engineers to copy many of the neural and biological functions of the individual brains. They still don't understand the source and inner workings of the soul and consciousness, and they refuse to acknowledge its existence or importance, as they believe it's merely just a manifestation of the mechanical workings of the brain function, which is enhanced by memories and experiences. So they don't understand it, and they can't replicate it. Okay. <sighs> now, this, this whole transcendence thing here with um, <clears throat> this uh, Bosignera's company, uh, Humitech, you know, this... <clears throat> excuse me. This this raises some questions in that, well, who's going to be able to apply for this type of um, <clears throat> um, ATF transference? As long as you have the money, can you do it? I, you know, is anybody going to uh, be able to apply for it? Then the second question comes in, well, if you're a psychopath or a serial killer, and as long as you have the money, are you going to be able to invoke this type of technology to download your mind? Well, that sounds like only politicians are going to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's all we need is those people living forever. <laughs> but, you know, it raises a, a whole um, Pandora's box of ethical and, and legal questions. You know, here I'm sitting back and I'm reading all of these, this information on Humitech, and I'm thinking to myself, my God, if the dangers of, of unleashing artificial general intelligence on a distributed network aren't bad enough, can you imagine the dangers presented by uploading a psychopathic brain map into a computer, okay, that's going to generate an artificial neural brain map on a distributed network. Oh, great. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why are they fooling around with this stuff, DJ? What, you know, I, mean, I don't... I, it blows my mind. I mean, you know, aren't human beings um, not only divine but unique and special and a product of the creator in and of themselves where you, sh you shouldn't be doing these types of things <laughs> you know what is motivating them and from what i see what motivates them is this you know god complex you know th they're looking for keys to control humanity control the human being reduce the human being to a component on a network <coughs> excuse me, and um, separate the, the element of soul and consciousness from that human being. Then you're just, then you're just a biobot at that point. Well, they already want to live forever. I can just hear yeah. old Bill Clinton going, you know, I think I'd like to hang around for another thousand years. You know, I think all the <laughs> young women, underage girls I could abuse... Uh, he, that guy makes me sick. That whole bunch makes me sick, if you want to know the truth. 
There are two or three of them up there that I think are okay, but the rest of them, I think, frankly, should be run out of town on a shutter. But um, <clears throat> I digress. No, no, but you're right, though. I think I think a lot of the people are waking up um, finally, and um, you know, the American people are kind of losing their patience with all this nonsense. Well, I certainly hope so. I mean, it's about time. I don't know what it's going to take for them to just go, you know what, I'm not doing anything this weekend. I think I'll march to the Capitol and raise hell for a while, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what it's going to take to light, to light the fire. I, th- I think it's lightable. I just don't know what it's going to take to do it. you got a president up there that's gone back on virtually everything that he said. They're bringing in more... <laughs> there was some ridiculous, uh, some ridiculous statistic about how many people are, are uh, from the uh, from the Muslim part of the world are going to uh, come into this country, and it's like more than more than everybody than in Iowa or something like this. It's incredible. I'm looking oh for God. it now. I'll find it in a minute. But um, yeah. Anyway, well. So he's yeah. Go ahead. Just you're scaring us to death. So then it's good. We like it. So keep going. Maybe if you scare us bad enough, it might spur some people to action. Well. You know, I was mentioning that um, personal, personalized and tailorable um, internet butler that Google and um, Facebook are looking to implement, you know, and that butler is going to basically um, be formulating the information bubble that surrounds, your, you know, you, the flesh and blood human network node, you know, to decide, you know, what you should see. Um, it'll decide you know, what it thinks should entertain you, all that type of stuff. Now, that uh, Monty Penny thing uses around 50 to 60 indicators to tailor your personal search results. And they don't ask you for your permission to do this, and they, they won't be asking you. They're not asking you now, and they're not going to be asking you in the future. And you can't change any of these indicators. So they are what they are. If you're going to use our technology, you're going to be subject to these indicators, and that's that. Now, um, some of the some examples of these indicators include like your geolocation tags, your political ideology, your um, financial status in, and income brackets, your sex, religion, marital status your search histories on the internet, your entertainment preferences, you know, and so on. So on one level, you know, the internet is showing us things, and it's doing it now, that it thinks we want to see, and not necessarily the things that we want or need to see in this iteration of the technology. Now, on another level, as I mentioned before, it can be used to send us information intended to change our ideologies, morals, social and political um, positions and boundaries, and to have us conform to behaviors and beliefs that, for example, don't serve the needs of the individual or of the nation as a whole, but serve the needs of the government. Do you remember the um, executive order... I tried to go over in in detail on one of our last shows, I don't know, two, three months ago. And it was the executive order on HPC, high performance computing. Yes. And one of the points I was trying to make is watch the verbiage in this executive order. Throughout that entire document, it says and refers to we will endorse and we will move forward on this technology and blah, 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 as it pertains to the needs of the individual? No. The nation as a whole? No. The needs of government. That, to me, scared the bejesus out of me. I'm like, you know, they are telling us where they're going with this stuff right up front. And I've never seen that particular, that type of verbiage, you know, um, permeating 
you know, an executive order or any other legislative document before as, you know, based on the needs of government, the needs of government. The need, wait a minute. What about the people that government is supposed to serve? Well, you know, what you're, about, you know, go, no, you go, go ahead. ahead. You got to fight. You got to yeah. fight for your space here. If I start stepping on you, just keep going. OK, go ahead. No. What about the needs of the people? that the government is supposed to serve? What about the needs of the nation that the people live within? You know, that government is supposed to manage. No, it is It is apparent, and they've made it abundantly clear, those needs are no longer on the table. It's the needs of government. Yeah. Now you got to ask yourself, what is government morphing into? Well, I think we know what it is. Somebody said it's not yeah. communism, it's totalitarianism. It's like, uh, let me straighten you up on something, because it was a nice caravan member, and and uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, the uh, emailer uh, meant well by saying it. Yes, there is a distinction between totalitarianism and pure communism. However, pure communism is not really achievable. It is uh, the Karl Marx manifesto uh, is, uh, that's the ideal but it cannot be achieved. And if you look at what happened in, oh yeah, it was the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, but socialism was just communism light. And in fact, mm-hmm. under in socialism, you can own private property. Well, I don't think that's the way it went in the old Soviet Russia. The state owned everything, and it was totalitarianism. But that's what this is. I mean, it's just like civilization... When you start off forming your civilization, people give up. Here's the deal, folks. Oh, Lord, I used that word again. I'm so sorry. Obama's ruined it for me forevermore. You know, folks oh, is folks. folks and folks and folks. Folks, yeah. Idiot. Go back to your folks. I think they're over there across the ocean. Um, <clears throat> in the beginnings, of, in the stages of the development of a civilization, people give up a little bit just a little bit of personal freedom to enjoy the benefit of the collective. But after a while, when the civilization begins to grow and grow and grow and grow, you give up more of your rights until the civilization no longer serves the individuals. The individuals become part of a collective that serves the so-called civilization, which is exactly exactly why the founding fathers and mothers... <clears throat> wanted limited government because they knew if this thing swells, it will no longer serve the people. The people's only position will be to serve the government. That's precisely where we are now. You've got people like Rush Limbaugh, no matter what you think of, of and what anybody thinks of Rush Limbaugh, he is correct when he says the so-called GOP, which is now stands for the goof-off party, needs to be disbanded. This is why you can't tell very much difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. Look at this little dude, uh, this Paul Ryan, Mr. Beard Grower, Mr. Hipster. What did Paul Ryan do exactly to earn enough money to buy this mansion that he's arranged to fund a fence for and has a security agent, sometimes known as a security guard, to go and, uh, and accost a, uh, a young woman who's taken a picture outside of his mansion. Wh- where exactly did Paul Ryan get his money? Why are all these people in Congress... People, do you not understand? Through their political action committees, through their various foundations, through their various... Uh, the, the receipt of various contributions. <clears throat> you talk about tax dodging. Why is it that no one in Congress is poor? Why... Uh, does nothing ever get done? Why is it no matter which party is in power, the agenda moves forward? These people are protecting their personal wealth. It is as simple as that. This is not complicated. This is human nature. They are greedy. More is good. And therefore, too much must be just right. And that's what they're headed for. That's what they want. They want too much. And we're supposed to pick up the tab for it, not only for their wealth, but for all of the, we we have to pick up the tab for all the mistakes they make by squandering countless billions and now trillions of dollars. That's on us. And in the meantime, they lie. 
94 to 103 million people not working. But unemployment's only 5%. This president has lied about everything. Let me go off on a rant here for just a second. It won't last long. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you want to keep your insurance plan, you can. Lie. If you want to keep your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Lie. We're going to reduce the cost of, of, of insurance, $2,500 per household. Lie. I'm not a dictator. I cannot uh, just uh, grant amnesty to countless millions of uh, mostly Mexicans and now Syrians and other Middle Easterners uh, by executive order. Lie. He did it anyway. I mean, how, many, how much do you have to be lied to before you figure out you're being lied to? What is it with these people? What, what, what is, how can anybody support? You know, I, I get crossed with Jesse Ventura on uh, several things. I never heard any Navy SEAL tell me that he thought it should be pot for everybody and open borders. I never heard any SEAL, I never heard any serviceman ever say that. Nobody, let alone a Navy man, let alone a SEAL. But he did say one thing that I completely agree with, and that is stop voting for Republicans and stop voting for Democrats. Now, that said, how exactly are we supposed to do that when the whole damn voting apparatus is rigged, when the, when the votes are counted with, with electronic, uh, it's electronic vote counting, sometimes offshore? Did that ever happen in the, in the 2012 election? Did that buddy-buddy of George Soros over in Spain, did he count the votes? I can't answer that question at this moment. I mean, folks, what's it going to take? What is it going to take for us to wake up to what is happening to us here? You, you see those photographs, those black and white pictures, all those stacks of bodies all over the place, these huge ravines filled with stiffs? What, do you think that was just a one-off thing? You think they're not willing to do it again? Of course they are. They're completely willing to do it again. Michael Hastings, vit, gone. Breitbart, vit, gone. Clancy, vit, gone. Philip Marshall, vit, gone. John Kennedy, vit, gone. You think these people have a conscience? They don't. I think a pretty strong case could be made for them being machines already. Anyway, go ahead, DJ. Sorry. I had to get that off my chest, I I can't argue with anything you've said. And I think one of the problems is that the laws that have been put forth by the lawmakers in government that we're all supposed to abide by don't apply to the people who wrote them. We had Melody Kramer on yesterday, this lawyer out there dealing with Riverside County. They're not following the law out there. It's almost as though they make it up as they go along. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, you know, getting back to this this emergence I see in in these um, AI-based filters, um, what they are going to inevitably do and are doing right now, but it's going to get worse, is... It will make it extremely difficult for people to receive information that hasn't been tailored to your own, um, your own, I don't even know if this is a word, specificality. And I think that this is a dangerous road. We're headed down um, because it's going to impact you. And although you think, well, I use this thing every day, and I love it, and I love it, and I love it, it gives me information, yeah, well, wait, because it's going to impact you in the following way. And those ways are your ability to choose a balanced information diet, like we were uh, talking about before, your ability to choose information you want to receive, um, your ability to make informed decisions versus decisions that have been preconceived for you. And um, and the worst, you know, one of the most dangerous aspects of this is that you don't have any say in what gets to you anymore via the filter bubble. And um, maybe even more importantly, you never get to see what's being filtered out. You're only seeing what you're receiving. Yeah. So, therefore, you don't have that choice. the 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 element of it, the element of choice is being mo- being removed from the individual in so many different ways today that it's almost hard to fathom. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this: At what rate is this development accelerating? I mean, where will we be? 
as far as you can tell from here, I know you're not like deep inside the apparatus, but just based on what you've been able to observe, the rate of development is going back a couple of years up to today. Projecting that forward a little bit, where will we be a year from now or two years from now? Um, you know, it's hard to say, and, you know, I, I don't want to put myself out there by, you know, giving a date or an event, um, but what I do see happening is the reliance on AI and AGI more and more by these large tech companies, and, you know, as we've discussed before, AI is based on, um, a concept known as deep learning, which as it begins to learn, it then starts learning exponentially faster, can make more decisions simultaneously, can make quote unquote better decisions. And um, at, at one point, it will be able to outthink human beings. And it's at that point where, you know, the real problem comes in. Yeah, I saw an article recently where they're trying to determine, gee, they're scratching their heads wondering how can we develop um, artificial intelligence that, that won't turn on us and, and, and kill us? Oh! I'm, I mean, this is what well, happens. There's, there's an answer for that, John. <laughs> yeah, shut it and off. Other, yeah, no, <laughs> no, that's not their answer. <laughs> they are um, AI... They're teaching AI to be more hu human-like by teaching it to disobey human commands. Now, engineers at Tufts University, they've elevated the already known that I've been on the rooftop screaming about potential dangers of this AI. They've elevated it to a whole new level, whereas um, uh, the natural evolutionary path inherently built into machine deep learning will ultimately lead to autonomous AI achieving self-awareness at or before the point of singularity that we just mentioned. Now, not only will this technology be able to rewrite its own programming and boundary parameters, its evolution now, based on these tests and studies being done at Tufts University, okay, the evolution now will be predicated on the AI's own self-preservation. Hmm. Think about that for a minute. I and this am. is all in an effort, according hmm. to you know the, the AI research division at Tufts, this is all in an effort to make us autonomous machines more human-like by providing them with the ability to preferentially choose which commands to obey and which to disregard based on the AI's determination of perceived threats to its own harm and to its own existence. And that pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, removes the last line of limitations to these autonomous machines. Now, <laughs> let me see if I can find in this report. I've, I've got I've to read, read to you. Uh, the the um, format of these tests. I, I, I had to read this twice. Okay, let me, if you bear with me. Okay. Okay, engineers at the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany have now successfully programmed an autonomous robot to inflict unprovoked aggressive contact with humans in order to be able to measure the degree for the AI to measure the degree of injury inflicted on the volunteer subject on the basis of pain and bruising to, de to determine tolerance thresholds before an open wound or death is caused. What? Would you mind I just stating that one more time so that can sink in really well? Engineers at the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, they're like, you know, um, uh, I guess Germany's version of MIT or some of these other, you know, AI think tanks here, here in the States here. Yeah, yeah. All right. They've successfully programmed an autonomous robot. 
okay, an AI robot, mm -hmm. to inflict unprovoked aggressive contact with humans in order to measure the degree of injury inflicted on the volunteer, the human volunteer subject on the basis of pain and bruising to determine tolerance thresholds before an open wound or death is caused. Wow. And in defense of this, they came out with a statement saying, well, their thinking is that by making autonomous systems more aware of the vulnerabilities of human flesh and bones, you know, we'll have a more compassionate AI. Well, let me tell you something, okay? AI has already been weaponized. What is a weapon designed to do? It's designed to identify a target and eradicate it. It's been weaponized. It already has no compunction about killing human beings. You know, for, so for these people to be out there saying, well, we're conducting these tests and we have the three, we have Eisenhower's three laws of robotics that can never be violated. You know, you idiots, you already taught it to kill. What more do you need? And now, you, now, now you're going to release this thing on distributed networks like the GIG, the IoT. You know, um, it's going to be running, monitoring, moni managing, and monitoring social network platforms, deciding what information you should see, what you shouldn't see, deciding you know how your ideological beliefs should be shaped. And you know, are you insane? No, but I'm getting there. Know. Okay, that's. I apologize. No, no, it's all right. G-I-G, and did you say I-O-G? I-O-T, the Internet of Things, and the G-I-G oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is the global information grid, the right. neural net. Yeah, yeah, I miss, I'm, I miss, I've miss. heard you wrong. Yeah, wow. Where are they? How many servers you reckon we have? How many, how many big Internet servers are there around the world? For a while there were 11, then there were, it went to 13. Somebody oh, now, in, now they're... Now they're server farms. I mean, they're farms. They're not individual servers. And mm -hmm. these farms consist of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of servers. And I guess they're all over the place. Yeah, they're all over. Because as we're digitizing more and more things and conducting, you know, funneling more and more of our personal business and, and private activity through the Internet platform, you know, they are requiring more and more... Um, of these server machines, not to mention the data repositories, excuse me, um, that are also server driven in places like Buff Bluffdale, Utah, and in Maryland. So, you know, the, you know, as they're pushing more and more in, in this direction, the machine end of, you know, the required technology is going to be growing and growing and growing, and we're seeing that happen. Okay, now let me ask you this. If you could just, uh, if you were queen of the May, <laughs> as it might be, um, and you wanted to put a dent in this initiative, what would you have your, your followers do? What can be done about this? I, I don't think writing a letter or sending an email is going to accomplish much. No, forget that. That'll be filtered out. <laughs> and, and who's funding all this? I take it it's taxpayer money that's funding it, yeah? Well, it's taxpayer money, but it's also um, black project money, black budget money. That's funny. I mean, there just, there just isn't enough money in the budgets to be funding, you know, a lot of these programs that are going on um, in the background that we're not being told about, but, you know, slowly but surely we're finding out about. Wow. Well, you know, when you look at the, um, if you look at the debt clock, the one that runs in real time, what I'm thinking is that this is not going to stop at all. It's going to be money that causes it not to stop. The country isn't our country. Forget about the world for the time being. Let's just talk about our country for a minute. The country's not going broke or about to be broke, the country is broke. It is broke. There's, there are almost $19 trillion in debt. So what's it going to be? They're going to just say there is no debt. We're going to reset the clock to zero. Well, if that could be done, then why has it not been done? 
So, if the answer to that turns out to be, well, no, we can't do that. That's not an option. We're way bigger and got way more going on than a country like Iceland that did that very thing. Just like, no, nah, there isn't any more debt. We're hitting the reset button. Good. We're all good now. And you guys are going to jail for a while for screwing around. Okay, fine. Well, but we're too big to fail. We're too big to go bankrupt. We're too big to to jail anybody. I mean, these people are too important. And besides, they they will if we jail them, then they will rat us out for all the stuff that we've done in our lives. So we need to give them a pass. That's what this is. This is criminal. This is no offense against people in Chicago because you already know this. <coughs> this is Chicago gangland style finance backed up by muscle. This is straight out of the 20s and 30s. That's all this is. This is not some complicated, you need a, you know, a woo-woo meter to figure out where it's coming from. This is, this, these people are bought and paid for. They're largely uh, criminals, and they are jailable. But because there are so many of them, and because they got their hooks in so many people, courts aren't going to jail them. Prosecutors aren't going to prosecute them. The only thing you can count on these people to do is send the uniformed muscle after you if you complain about it. And they're counting on your being afraid of it. But we've watched many movies and read many books about how, yeah, it looks scary, but you know what? These people confronted it and they kicked it in the rump so hard that it changed its ways. In fact, it disappeared. And Oh, look, that one did manage to go to prison for, well, forever. So they're not going to stop this. The debt alone, DJ, what do you think about this? This this is my theory. I think the debt alone is enough to compel them to push through forced ideological orientation techniques. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing that already happening, John, in in the form of this massive social engineering campaign that's been going on for some time. And, 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 And what is diversity? What is cultural tolerance? What does that really mean? You know, I've been kicking this around in my head, and what it seems to me is it's that, you know, you take those virtues and, and those beliefs and, and those privileges that you hold for yourself and you give them to someone else. That's what that is. That, I mean, that's what I, where I see all of this stuff going. Well, it's communism. You know, yeah. Fascism, communism, uh, slavery. It's all the same thing in the end. It is. It all amounts to you're losing your individuality, your prosperity, your identity, your rights, your freedoms, even your ability to think for yourself. And once that's gone, forget it. <laughs> you know, and I think that's where they're headed. You know, and, uh, who was it? Um, I think we. We went over this in, in one of the other talks we had. Was the outgoing head of the CIA, Bill Casey, in his departing statement, you know, um, he said something to the effect that I'm paraphrasing, we'll know that our operation has succeeded when everything the, the American people believe is a lie. Yep. I mean, my God, could you be any clearer on what your objective is? And they're using many, many, several different avenues to accomplish this and you know the area i'm focusing on you know the iot the global information grid you know this global neural net using artificial intelligence that's only one area that they're exerting you know this this power or this force through but they're also doing it through through the social engineering through these tolerance programs we have to be tolerant we have to accept everybody even if it goes against every grain in your body you know, if you don't accept it, well, then you're just a racist. Yeah. What? Racist, so, anarchist, radical, undesirable, and unperson. Yeah, and undesirable. Yeah, you're you're not. You know, you're not a desirable member of society. Mm-hmm. There's a cool little mm-hmm. website called differencebetween.net. It might be interesting for people to understand this. Of course, an, an, no site on the web is is going to be like uh, certified as uh, the oracle, but this comes close. Communism versus fascism. I'll go quickly. 
Though okay. some people may term communism and fascism as the two sides of the same coin, they are different in their ideology and other aspects. Communism is a socioeconomic system that stands for a class-less, state-less, and an egalitarian society. Fascism is an ideology that tries to bring together radical and authoritarian nationalism. Uh, communism stands for a stateless society where all are equal. No one is rich or poor in a communist system. In communism, it is the community that holds the production and the major resources. On the other hand, fascism pertains to state, and it considers state on top of everything. In fascism, the state is all-embracing. For the fascists, no human values exist outside the state. Fascism believes that everything is within the state, and nothing is above the state or outside the state or against the state. Fascism believes in nationalism, including economic nationalism, corporatism, including economic planning, militarism, and totalitarianism, dictatorship, and social interventionism. The communists think globally, whereas the fascists think only in a national level. In communism, I'm getting to the end of it, the state is the custodian of everything. And it is the state that owns everything. On the other hand, in fascism, the state has control over everything. In simple words, communism means state ownership, fascism means state control. So guess what? That's why true communism is an ideal that really cannot be achieved outside of some hippie commune, and even then, that's not going to work for long. Somebody's going to get grumpy and get bucky, and then the fights are going to break out, and that now it'll just go downhill from there. What we have in this country is communo-fascism, where the state owns everything and has control over everything. And that's just plain weird. Well, I think if the proponents of this, you know, one world government, new world order, whatever you want to call it, um, triumph in this, what we're going to see is global fascism. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if it's one or the other, it's, it's going to be global fascism, which, which is if effectively totalitarianism. So, mm -hmm. actually, the emailer was correct. It is totalitarianism. It's just that when communism was tried, it, it turned into fascism. Communism seems to be an elusive ideal and nothing more. It's, just, it's a theory of the way things should be. You know, from each uh, according to his talents and to each according to his needs. Yeah, right. That'll work. When you're up, you know, smoking voluminous quantities of weed and taking acid, it might work. And then once you come to and you try and make it happen, it doesn't. Parthian shot, my dear, what shall we do? How shall we prepare ourselves for the somewhat technocratic gloom that's kind of blowing in here all over everything? <laughs> well, what we can do is, you know, what people like you, John, are doing and people like I'm trying to do is to expose and oppose what's going on. If we don't expose it, we can't oppose it. If that makes sense. Well um, said. Um, you know, as far as what we can do, um, there were probably, we probably would have had a lot more options if we were aware of this 10 or 20 years ago. <clears throat> if we were aware, <clears throat> excuse me, of the level of infiltration and um, if we were aware of the direction they were taking us uh, 10 or 20 years ago. Now we have all become so entrenched in our everyday lives, it's going to be extremely difficult. And what I tell people when they ask me that very question, well, what can I do? You know, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be assimilated. You know, what can I do? And the answer, although it's simple, it's very difficult. It's to get off this grid as much as you can, and I'm not talking about your power grid and stuff like that. I'm talking about getting off this global information grid as much as you can. And if you can't <clears throat> uh, limit your activity on it to a minimum, only what you must do. And by all means, 
get off these social media platforms. They're using that information against you. Information is being weaponized. Just like speech and religion and race and sex, information is being weaponized as well. Isn't that funny? Anything that, that may in any way make, you know, make life enjoyable, make it worth living, can be turned into some sort of a weapon. The weaponeers of the future. Nice. And historically, that's what they've done. All of this stuff has been rolled out, John, with the premise, premise of it's going to improve the human experience. You know, you're going to have more leisure time. You're going to be able to stay connected. And you know, They don't tell you about the other side of the coin, you know, about the, the other uses of this technology, and that's by design. You know, it, it takes people to sit down and try and figure out, all right, you know, well, yeah, they brought this to us oh, how many years ago? And, and now here we see 30, 40 years, not even 30, 40 years, you know, 15, 20 years later, we see this massive NSA, NSA uh, data collection going on. Yeah. You know, but it's all to keep you safe, not to worry. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, it's always a pleasure if, if uh, you know, if not slightly disturbing speaking with you. You're a real sharp cookie, DJ. It's, uh, I consider you to be a, uh, a real treasure. And uh, if I don't speak to you between now and the end of the year, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. And hopefully you we too, get too. enough people on board uh, to expose and then oppose. You know, when Arthur asked Merlin, Merlin, have we defeated evil? And Merlin says, well, there never really is one without the other. Well, that's true. Mm. It's the yin and yang. It's all that stuff. So here's the thing. We might not be able to eliminate it, but we can certainly slow it down. So let's do what we can. As this guy, John Wells, who thinks sometimes he has a brain in his head, always says, just do all you can as well as you can for as long as you can, and that'll be enough. DJ, God bless, sweetie. Thank you for coming on again. All right. Thank you, John. Take care. We'll be talking. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.